Here are some sample problems from section 3.9 that could help you with your homework. So let's try these. Here's the first one. So we're going to have a function. x squared ln of x. And we want to find the derivative, or dy dx. So first you have to recognize this is a product. We have two things being multiplied. So to find the derivative, you leave the first alone. You take the derivative of the ln of x, and then you take the derivative of the first one, and you leave the ln of x by itself. And then you notice these x's here, one of them cancel, and we have our answer. And if you wish, you can factor out the common x. And there is example number one. Let's try another one. y equals ln of, we'll do 10x. Well, you have to recognize we have a function inside of another function. 10x is a function on the inside. So what's the derivative of ln of box? Well, it's 1 over box times the derivative of box. Well, the box is 10x, and the derivative of 10x is secant squared x. So we have secant squared x over 10x. Now, we can simplify this, and I'll go ahead and do that for you. But just to look at this, we have the ln of a box. Well, ln of x is 1 over x, right? So ln of box is 1 over box times derivative of box. So what is secant squared? That's 1 over cosine squared. So we're going to have 1 over 10x cosine squared x. But then what is tan x? Tan is sine x over cos x. And we still have the cos squared. One of these will cancel with one of those. And we have 1 over sine x cos x. But 1 over sine x is cosecant. And 1 over cosine is secant. And there is our answer for that one. Let's just keep going. I'll do a bunch of examples here. So what if we have 7 to the x power? So remember, if you have e to the x, the derivative, I am my own grandpa. But if you have a different base, so e is just a number. So if you have some number to the x power, you learn the derivative, I am my own grandpa, times the ln of that base. So the derivative here, whoa, that's bad. Let's try that again. The derivative here, I am my own grandpa, times the ln of the base. And that would be how you do this example. So let's get trickier. What if we have some number to the, let's go sine x. So instead of having 5 to the x, it's a function here. So you got to consider that as box. What's the derivative of 5 to the box? Well, what's the derivative of any number to the x? It's that number to box. So we're going to have 5 raised to the box power. Don't forget the ln of the base is always there. But then we have to multiply by the derivative of the box. So the derivative of some number to some power is that number to the power. So we copy that down, ln of the base, times the derivative of the box when we have chain rule. So that box is sine x, and then you have to multiply by the derivative of that, which is cosine x. So that's that example. What order? Maybe the ln 5 first. 5 to the sine x. I don't know. It's all kind of weird stuff, so that's fine.
Let's keep going. More examples. Let's do... Here's a weird one. When you have something strange like this, you need to figure out something to do because it's kind of weird. So just a reminder, when you have a variable to a power, that's easy. So this is a number, a variable to a number or a constant. You bring the constant in front, decrease that constant by one. So you have a variable to a number. Then you learned if you have a number to a variable called an exponential, I forgot the derivative sign there, the derivative is I am my own grandpa, ln of the base. But here, we have a variable there and a variable there as the exponent. So that's um, quite a bit more difficult. So you have to use the power of logs to simplify this. So we're gonna ln both sides and that's gonna allow us to do something that's powerful. So we have a rule for logs. If you have a log of something to a power, you can p in front of that log. The power can come in front. So we're gonna use that rule and bring that in front. And we're able to do that because we ln both sides, giving us the ability to move that in front. So we have ln of y equals ln of x, ln of x, because I moved it in front. Now to make my life easier, I'm gonna rewrite this as ln of x squared so I don't have to use the product rule. So now I don't have product rule, I'm gonna have a chain rule instead, which is easier. Now remember, y is your function, x is your variable. So when you take the derivative of ln of box, it's one over box times derivative of box. There's chain rule there. Here we have box squared. What's the derivative of box squared? You bring the two in front, decrease that by one. So it's two box times derivative of box, but that's gonna be one over x. So we're getting very close here. We have two over x, ln of x, I just multiply these together to get that. Now, we have a problem. We want to solve for dy dx, but we have this y here we don't want. So we multiply both sides by y. Those will cancel. Now we have dy dx. And that's going to be 2 over x, ln of x. But what is y? If you look at the very beginning, y is our original function, x ln of x. So we replace y with x ln of x. And there is our derivative of that crazy looking original problem using the properties of logs and implicit differentiation and chain rule. A lot of crazy stuff there. So one last example, there's something called logarithmic differentiation. So I'm going to do this example and to show you how it makes life much easier. So I'm going to give you this one, f of x. Let's do x squared plus x to the seventh power times, and let's do x plus 1 to the fourth over x minus 3 to the third. Man, the derivative of this would be ridiculous. I'll call this y. Just because you have quotient rule, product rule, chain rule, all just interwined. So the secret, if we ln both sides, we can use the property of logs to make life much easier. So you have a rule. The log of two things being multiplied you can actually take the log of each one individually and add them. Now, if you have two being divided, you can actually subtract it. I know I'm actually kind of going, doing a little 
shortcutting here. I should be dividing first and then adding, but it comes out the same. And then we use the P in front of the log rule. And so you, what you see happening, this is called logarithmic differentiation. Using the properties of logs, we're getting rid of all of our quotient rule, all of our product rules, and making the derivative much easier. All right, now we take the derivative of everything. Again, remember y is, let me box these, y is your function. So the derivative of ln of a function is one over that function times the derivative of that function. Um, ln of box, the derivative is one over box times the derivative of box. Same thing here, ln of box is one over box times the derivative of box. And then again, one over box times the derivative of a box. Now, for time constraints, I'm going to um, not simplify everything out completely. So what we have is seven times two x plus one over x squared plus x plus four over x plus one, minus three over x minus three. And the last step, we don't want y on the left side. We wanna solve for dy dx. I multiply both sides by y, so now I have just dy dx. It can get kinda of ugly here. So what is y? Y is our whole original function, all of that. So I'm gonna copy all of that there. Now, you may say this looks ugly, but if you would have had to do the whole original problem with product rule, quotient rule, and all that, you would realize this is much nicer. So I'm just gonna copy and paste this because it's gonna make my life easier. Let me paste that down here. But let me move all of this. I'm doing some electronics shenanigans. All right, that's dy dx, all of that. And that's it for this video.